on Bear Grylls. When I was growing up, all of this was my playground. I want to find out if kids today have got what it takes to abandon their mobile phones and survive for two weeks out here in the wild. Dig deep, finish strong. Welcome to Bear Grylls Survival School. I'm heading into the heart of North Wales to meet 10 young people who are about to embark on the journey of their lifetime. And for the next two weeks for them, there's gonna be danger at every turn. Five boys and five girls, aged 12 to 15, have won through auditions all over the UK to take on the wild. If you put me out in the middle of the woods, I just, I wouldn't know what the hell to do. The thought of drinking my own wee and eating worms makes me feel a bit sick, but I think I'd do it anyway. It'll be right back to basics, stripped of home comforts and all technology. Two weeks without my phone, be horrible. I sit inside a lot, I edit videos, I film, and I wanted to get outside and challenge myself. Hashtag YOLO. I do want it to be hard, but I might regret that in a few weeks. <laughs> if they're not nervous, they should be. I don't think I'm going to last, but I'll try. I have a feeling it's going to come in a helicopter, yeah. See, look, see, look. Bad girls, isn't it? I was not going to lie. So did come on a parachute, yeah. 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 Awesome. Morning champs. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Great. So you've done the difficult bit, which is the first step. Any great journey, the hardest bit is often that first step, and you've done it, you're here, so well done. But this journey is going to be tough. If you want it easy, the time to go home is now. All want to be here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I want to introduce you to three members of my team. They've been with me through hell and back many times. Scott, Tim, and Sarah, these guys are the best. Scott is an ex-Royal Marines commando, and he's as hard as nails. Tim is a mountain and expedition specialist, and Sarah is our fearless expert in water activities. You're in incredible hands. You gotta learn from them, you gotta listen to them, and you gotta trust them. Be prepared for a little bit of hardship because there will be times over the next few weeks you feel a bit beaten up. You'll feel exhausted. You're going to feel wet because it ain't always sunny in Wales. And you've also got to endure two weeks without your smartphones. Guys, let's gather those up. <laughs> Gadgets will be no use where these guys are headed. Over the next 12 days, they'll be learning how to survive in hostile environments. They'll be plunging into freezing water. Just remember this, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Climbing dangerous mountains. We can, I think it was cold, <laughs> we're all wet and damp. It was worth going through the pain. We can't stay out here tonight. <laughs> Confronting the highest cliffs. They're gonna be scared looking down this. <laughs> this is high, this is dangerous. Oh. Last push, you can do this. And deep mines. I'm really claustrophobic. Oh, I don't want to do it at all. We can do it, yeah. <laughs> we can do it, so we can do this, okay? It's fun. It is a sheer drop down there into the abyss. Whoa! <laughs> They'll be living off the land. Oh. There's three dead squirrels in a bag. That's just three squirrels. Spending the night wherever they can make or find shelter. 
all building up to a challenging final survival exercise. Lana, we don't have time, come on! Abandoned on a bare mountainside. We can't wait any longer! So I have an extreme test to find out urgently just what the team know about survival. The first thing you're going to do is spend the whole night out in the forest on your own. You're going to have to make your own camp. You're going to have to look after each other. You're going to have to look after yourselves. You've got to do it all for yourselves. The only thing I'm going to give you is just a little bit of food, but it isn't going to be nice food. It's something that Antarctic and Arctic explorers for generations have used to stay alive, and it's called pemmican. Oh. It gets its energy from three sources, fat, meat, fruit. Oh, no. Just eat it like that. <laughs> wow, yeah, I've eaten a lot of bad survival food over the time, but mm, oh, God. that's a new taste. OK, who wants just to try a little bit of this? No. Okay, we'll give you a little bit. There you go. Just remember, the Antarctic explorers would live off this stuff for months and months. Well done. It's like a mix of cardboard and dog food. Oh! Oh, that's That's the fall. That's disgusting. When you hang with me for a couple of weeks, you're going to eat this sort of thing and a lot worse. Let's go. It's going to be a very tough night. With no experience of the wild, they've got to build a shelter completely on their own, using only what they can find in the forest. I never thought that we'd have to spend like the first night with no one to help us. And we're all like gobsmacked, we've no idea what we're going to do. Tonight it's going to be hard, very hard. First night and not really learn anything. Straight up here, come on, how you get Kieran, let's go. Like it was just going to be nice and like, yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. To help my leaders judge the young survivors, I've split them into two teams, girls versus boys. If you need a structure tonight, it's going to last for four or five hours, get some sleep, batteries recharged, we're ready to start tomorrow. Yep? Yeah. Yeah. Go. They've got just two hours until nightfall, and the expedition leaders will be watching and judging their every move. Oh, we kind of need like a plan what to do. We're near the water, right there. The water's right for this. I was thinking if we get like a giant branch and we just put it against here, we get a few, and yeah. that's kind of a shelter, and we'll have to sleep under there somehow. Oh, look, down there, down there, down there. Oh, it's actually a good place. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good idea. I think that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. While the girls work together on their plan, the boys haven't even agreed on a site for their shelter. We need to listen to everyone's opinion. Oh, so yeah. My <laughs> family's done that. We'll have about 15 minutes. Yeah, that's true, but like, if we work quickly... Yeah, just get this one over here. Oh, yeah. The girls are building fast, and led by Tara, yeah. their shelter is taking shape nicely. Our plan is to stack all twigs kind of up like that, and then get some leaves and try and work off this structure and try and just to get some shelter. 14-year-old Tara comes from Glasgow, but sounds more Australian than Scottish, having lived down under for the last 10 years. Back in Australia, I did sailing, I did scouting, I did netball, but because we just moved here, we're basically just unpacking our stuff. The rain, it's a bit annoying sometimes, but when the sun comes out, you appreciate it more than you did only in Australia. She feels her outdoor life in Oz will help her stay the course. The traits that I think um, I have that will become useful on the show would probably be um, my enthusiasm and my positivity and uh, probably my leadership skills. I, I've had some experience with that. Here, do you want this one? Here you go. But it will take all of Tara's sunny personality to cope with the infamous Welsh weather. It's going to be a few rough nights. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll live, it'll be fine. Can I just say, these two are resting on each other, so try not to move these two. Okay. The girls are doing pretty well. It's all about the planning. I didn't know really what they're going to build because they've got no real skills. There's a few things they've got wrong, but there's actually a few things they've got very right. 
In contrast, the boys are struggling to work together and are getting nowhere fast. What are we doing? We need to decide now. Like I see right that now. Here, but can we go across the river? No. Yep. The oldest in the group, 15-year-old Kieran, admits he's not a team player. Uh, when people try and tell me what to do, I don't like it. Like, it just frustrates me and I just won't listen to them. It's the way I am. Kieran is no stranger to the outdoors living on a farm in Lancashire with his foster parents. I've been in foster care for about 13 years. Moving to different places and different schools, it has an effect on you. You don't feel like you can bond with people 100% and trust people. It's something we're going to try and help change during survival school. But for now, with nightfall fast approaching, the boys are still arguing. Nothing, it's not going too well at all. And the light's leaving us. So far, it's been tough. I hope it just doesn't get harder because I'll just lose it. One thing this exercise highlights is how humans have gradually lost touch with the natural world. As we've advanced, life has become easier. You know, we take things for granted. The tap, we turn it, water comes out, we close the front door, we're protected from the rain. And actually, humanity's in many ways lost a lot of the survival skills that our ancestors just took for granted. They can make fire just like that. They can put up shelter easily. Well, keep it like that, then we can turn it upside down and build things up. We like can that. fit this in there. Come on. No, no keep that one. Keep that one. I mean, no, but low. do you feel that's quite good? Because then I mean, we can, that feel... can fit five people in. It's not going to be the best sleep of our lives, is it? No. Okay. You all just go and get twigs, and me and Charlie will build it. Yeah. They're just having a bit of a spa. Bailey sat on the side in the grump. Kieran's going, stop mood. They're not, yeah, they're not working well together. We've definitely got to think about this. Because this isn't, this just doesn't seem like it's working. While the boys have still hardly begun, the girls are putting the finishing touches to their shelter. I've collected loads of these leaves to obviously keep it waterproof because if it starts raining, it'll seep in. So we need more and more leaves just to give it layers. We need to hurry up. The survivors are still wet from their river crossing and hypothermia will be a real danger if left exposed to the elements. Where are we actually going to lie down? Like in here, like this, because there's no way we're going to get two people like that and we're then... We're going to get five people get... in No, I think my mic's getting two in there. We're this is gonna not this. comfy. It's not going to be comfy. Are we cosy? No, no we're, we're not finished yet. We're not finished at all. Just yeah. because you've got about 30 minutes left right, of light, actually. Right, you think that's going to be all right? As night closes in, the boys rush to waterproof and insulate their shelter. Who was that? Who was that? My chair moved. Here and watch it. The knocker has game over. But Azriel hasn't quite got the idea of making the shelter watertight. Yep. Good. That's good. Oh, just two hours to build that. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Grylls could have built a house in two hours. Temperatures are dropping fast, so the leaders are forced to make a safety call. OK, guys, Bear wanted you to stay out there completely using the wild. We've come to the decision that you should have a couple of sleeping bags. It's cold this evening. Not going to be much cloud cover, so it's going to be a chilly evening. And we've got three sleeping bags per group. Okay, one top tip, don't eat anything apart from pemmican. What's poisonous, what's not, you don't know. You haven't got any knowledge at the moment. This is it. Good night. Bye. The team are on their own with a long night ahead in the wild. Right, so we just go to bed? Yeah, okay. pretty much. We need to eat something. Okay, anything you eat. With no way to light a fire, there's just one thing on the menu. Cold, raw pemmican. The pemmican is disgusting. <laughs> I can't taste anything. <laughs> I would just like berries covered in muck. Alana and Maria are the only girls to try it. And for the boys, just Bailey and Adam are prepared to give it a go. Put that away because we're not in here. Yeah, I'm going to eat it. It's like it. flat meat. It's like a mouldy flapjack. I'm done with it now. <laughs> it's like a baked And then the vomit added in and mashed together and fried and then dog biscuits mashed in. A little bit it's of poo. Uh, I don't know why you were gifting though. It wasn't gift worthy. Refusing to be put off, Adam is determined to appreciate every part of his survival school experience. The 15-year-old has worked hard to get fit for the expedition. 
From birth, he's had a problem with his back. I was born with something called scoliosis. It's the curve of a spine. My spine is kind of like a backled C, and it's basically, it kind of goes like that. So the last operation I had, they put a titanium rod in my back, and they're hoping that that gradually straightens it. Adam developed a passion for computer games during long stays in hospital. Though now recovered, he's still hooked on his console. How are you going to cope? You don't even go to your grands without your Xbox. I went last time without it, so... Yeah, for a day? Two days. Over the summer, I've got more reliant because I wanted to break that habit and get back out to going out. Determined to change his life around, Adam is a man on a mission. Because of everything I've been through and I've came out the other side, everybody thinks I'm fragile and I want to prove to everybody that I can do it. This is so cramped. Yeah, I'd rather be in a tent. Wait, Bailey, what are you using as a pillow? Us. Yeah, you too. <laughs> no, I'm using the mine. boys' shelter is small and uncomfortable. I'm surprised they haven't even made a bed out of leaves. Oh, the door hey. broke in. Hey. The girls' one-sided design is more successful. Now they just need to share out their three sleeping bags. You guys need to go over right. this. Right, yeah, come on. Twelve-year-old Savannah feels she's getting a raw deal on the covers. I'm kind of having to half and half here. Yeah, I know. And I've hardly got... That's a survival situation. Despite being the youngest of the girls, okay. she's determined to get her voice heard at survival school. Yeah. Alan, if he's pulling that one off me. That's all I've got is the middle one. I think I have got attitude, like a lot of attitude. I'm very loud and out there. I do have my opinion, but I just say it no matter what. Savannah comes from inner city Birmingham and applied to survival school to get some excitement in her life. My normal life is literally boring. <laughs> Go to the park and walk the dog, but that is literally it. I'm on my phone 24-7. When adults tell me to get off your phone, we didn't have that back in the day. I was like, it's not my fault. I was born into a more evolved generation. Can we take a selfie? Mm. Let's take a ah. selfie. We don't have our phones. Oh, done. <laughs> As the five girls settle under their three sleeping bags, Scott notices something strange about the boys' camp. There's a lot of sleeping bags in here. The boys have stolen an extra two sleeping bags from the leader's emergency supply. So I'll take two, just stay with me. Oh, no. You need to open up the bags, five of you get underneath, share body heat. Get the bags open, yeah. you start working as a team, otherwise wow. someone's going to get seriously injured tonight. OK, see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. This is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Working, is it? Why did you have to take mine away? I can't flip over. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, baby, no, because I need to do this up. The boys finally settle down for the night, but their shelter is frankly of little use. If it rains or the wind gets up, they'll be in deep trouble. In the end, they're extremely lucky. The weather holds and all the young survivors make it through the night. But the girls are awake early and they've barely slept. I didn't sleep very well. It was too cold. It's so warm in here, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get out. Despite their lack of shelter building skills, the boys actually sleep longer. So Scott gives them his very own survival wake up call. OK, team, morning! Here we go, guys, here we go. Five minutes, up on your feet, boots on, let's go! My night was uncomfortable because I pulled sticks from under me and rocks and just digging into my skin and stuff. It was actually quite cosy in the end. The ground was keeping me cold and the, the sleeping bag was keeping me warm, so it was kind of just a perfect mix of both. I had to share a sleeping bag with Kieran and he took off the sleeping bag, so I hardly get anything. It was really cold. If the young survivors are expecting time to relax, they've got another thing coming. Every day at survival school will begin with a dose of physical training. The military style session aims to improve basic fitness and also, more importantly, to develop the mental toughness to cope with the hardships ahead.
kit back on. You don't need to get all that lot on. Just a couple of layers, I think. It's been a baptism of fire for the young survivors. And as expected, the overnight exercise has pointed out some key strengths and weaknesses. Last night was your first night out in the wild, okay, and it was a tough one. Girls selected a nice shelter area. Their shelter actually was very effective. It's called a lean-to. Just gets you out the wind, probably not going to keep you dry, but it's very effective. And you guys found your own roles within the team, and you kind of got on with what you were doing, but you still helped each other out. Boys, not working very well. And why do you think that was, boys? I think one person wanted to do this, the other one wanted to go over here. I think we didn't listen to anything. And Correct. I think you didn't decide, so you didn't have a chat. There was no conversation going on, and you all went off in different directions. So there's something to think about, maybe, and learn from uh, in the coming weeks. Each day, the leaders will decide whether the boys or the girls have done best overall. And today is pretty clear. Sarah, for you, girls or boys? I'm going to go uh, with the girls. I can massively, massively say that it's got to be the girls. Girls, you got it. One nil. One to the girls, zero to the boys. Now, when's the last time you had any food? Okay. Lunch Lunch last, last, last night. night. Delicious pemmican last night, yeah? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. No? Whoa, 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 whoa. How much pemmican you got left? All of it. Quite a lot. How, how can you, hold on, how can you have any food left? You must be full. It's too slow. OK, it's a bit rancid. OK, it's a bit stinking. It's hundreds of calories. You've got no energy levels. You're going to walk 100 metres, 200, 300 metres, you can collapse. We give you food, you eat it. You eat everything. Well, today, you're lucky. Yeah. We have prepared breakfast for you, and I expect all this to go. What well, used to be called gruel, I suppose. Oh, it's better than pemmican. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a big <laughs> bacon sandwich that I could just eat up right now. Everybody around me don't I think what's dawning on the young survivors at this early stage is just the scale of the challenge. My idea of what it'd be like was completely wrong, but I'm quite proud of myself that we lasted the night without, you know, going around saying we want to go home. I'm glad I came because it's like once in a lifetime opportunity in there. But it was really difficult yesterday. And they say it's going to get harder and harder each day. I didn't expect it to be this hard on the first night, but I'm happy that like I've been there and like done it now, and I got through it. I've learned in my life that the ultimate key to survival, when you're up against it, it's not about physical strength. It's actually all in here, in the mind and in the heart. And when that going gets tough, as it invariably will in this sort of environment, to be able to summon up that positive mental attitude will make all the difference for these young people. Next time on Bear Grylls Survival School. Starts off slippy, hands out then, guys. In at the deep end, tackling treacherous terrain. <laughs> Cold. Yes. And taking on a powerful waterfall. I can't do it. Savannah, you can do it. I really can't.